Today we're delving back into WordPress automation using BitFlows and we're going to take a look at how we can use tools like this to ultimately connect WordPress to lots of other different services to have things going on in the background so we don't have to deal with them manually. We can automate the process by using a simple trigger and multiple actions. We're going to delve into routers or routers and how we can split our overall process off into various different parts and really create some comprehensive automations. Now, this is a sponsored video by BitFlows, but as with all sponsored content on this channel, I'm not going to give you any opinions. I will demonstrate some of the functionality and you can make a more informed decision if you want to check out BitFlows for yourself. And you can download the free version and try that out and get a feel for everything. So let's start off by taking a look at the automation we're going to look over and how we're going to break this down to various different parts and recreate it for ourselves. So here we have it. This is our overall automation workflow. Let me break this down. I'll give you a quick TLDR and then we're going to start creating. First of all, we've got our trigger. The trigger is always the first thing that happens and this then will trigger these other actions going down this flow. And if you consider things going from the left to the right, that's going to give you a good way of seeing how this all works. So our trigger is a form being submitted. In this example, we're using a BitForms form, but you can use lots of other different triggers. There are lots available to you here. We're then going to create a new WordPress user based upon the information in that form. Then from there, we're going to direct this through a router or router, and we're going to have three different things take place. We're going to have an email being sent out. We're going to have some information added into a Google Sheet, and we're also going to send a message to Slack. Lots of businesses use Slack to communicate and having this whole process set up where once someone submits that form, all these other things are done and a message is posted to Slack can be super useful. Consider this being something like a support thing. You may have a support form being submitted, go right the way through to Slack and your team then manages things via Slack. Pretty cool. Let's see how we would break this down and create something like this for ourselves. So let's come back into the basics of BitFlows and let's create a new workflow. We'll give it a name. Then we can choose to work with a blank slate. We can check out the Get Started Guide or we can go through and use some of the pre-built automations. We're going to start from scratch. Let's create this. So this is where we start off. This is our trigger. The trigger is the first thing that makes all of the actions actually take place. So the first thing we need to do is tell it what that trigger is. Now I've created a form inside BitForms, so we're going to use that as our trigger. So what we need to do is click to select. We can then go and search for what we want to use. So we've got apps and actions. In our example, we want BitForm. And you can see if we select that, we've now got a submit success. So once that form is submitted successfully, that will trigger what comes after it. Now, depending upon what you use, you may have different integration options here. For example, if you're using WordPress, you can have lots of things. New user subscribes, new post is posted, an update to the post, lots of different things. We'll take a look at some of those as we go through. So let's say submit success. There we go. So now we've told it what the trigger is. We just now need to tell it what form we wanted to use. So we'll select the drop down list here. We can set this to be working with any form. So if you just literally want to have a form trigger these series of actions, you can set any form. But this example, we want a very specific form. So we're going to say this one. Now we need to listen for a response. Now, this is the key thing, and this is the same with all automation tools. When you set up any of these kinds of triggers and actions and so on, we need to capture data from that trigger. So in this example, it's submitting the form. So we tell it to listen for a response, and then we need to submit that form to test it out. So we'll say, listen for a response. That's going to wait for three minutes now and wait for us to actually fill out the form. This is our form, so I'm going to say, simply fill out some basic info. What you place inside here is totally irrelevant. It's there just to check the data is coming through and flowing into BitFlows. So we'll submit this. We get our success message. OK, so now let's go back into BitFlows. And as we can see, that response has now been captured. If we look on the right hand side, we expand these out. We can see the data that's been captured, so everything we filled into our form. Now, the most important thing here is that we can use this data and use it in other parts. So in our message, in Slack, all those kinds of things, we can transfer this information over. So that's grabbed our data. That's the first part done. We can now close this down and we successfully set up our trigger. Now let's go and create our first action, which is to add a new user to our WordPress website. So again, we're going to click on the plus. This time we need to select an app. So we're going to do WordPress. 
open this up and as I said you can see we now have an awful lot of different in this example actions not triggers so we need to find exactly what we want in our example we want to create a new user we'll select that from our list move this over so we can see a bit better what's going on so select the user role we're going to set these to be a subscriber since it's just standard WordPress functionality but obviously if you create your own user roles they'll be listed here as well Select email notification. So who do you want to send this to? The admin, the user, or both? Let's just say in this example, we'll do both. And now we can map fields. Now mapping fields is basically where we map the fields inside, in this example, WordPress, to the fields that we're passing over, the information, the data from our form, our trigger. So our email field, we're going to click to open this up, and you can see there's all the values we've got from inside Bitform. So this first one, we need their email. So we'll choose this field, and that now inserts the value that will be pulled in from that trigger from the form being submitted. Next up, the username. So for this example, we're going to do the same thing again. Now, obviously, you can choose what you want from here. You could choose their email again. You could choose their first name, whatever you kind of want. In this example, let's set their email again. If you want to add more fields, you absolutely can do. So let's say we add a field in drop this down and you can say what names so we'll say their first name click to open their value up choose their first name from the list add another field we'll choose their last name again we're going to choose the relevant fields so what we're doing is we're basically mapping this data to the relevant sources inside wordpress so you can keep on doing this if you want to grab more info but i think we're fine here we've got their email address their username and their first and last name Generate a password automatically, yep, let's do that. And if you want to show user meta field mapping, we can do that as well. Let's say test run. There we go, our test run was successful. It's given the user ID and so on. So we've seen what the output is. If you want to check your input, you can see that here as well. So we can see exactly what's being passed over. Cool, so we've set up the second part of this. So now, let's close that down. So now we've set up a very, very simple flow. The form is submitted, which is the trigger, and a new user is added with the relevant data pulled from the form. Now let's go and add some more things in. Like I say, we want to have this do multiple actions afterwards. So this time we want to add in a router or router to have multiple different actions take place at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the left-hand side, and this time we're going to choose tools instead of apps. And now we've got some options available to us. Routers, conditions, delays, and so on. So... It's up to you how you want to use these various different things. This example, we're going to set up a router. So we're going to drag this into our setup, drop this, and that's now connected. This now allows us to create various different app connections or whatever we kind of want to do. So we can click on the plus again. This time we're going to type in mail. And what we want is this standard mail. Now, obviously, you can see there's tons of other options there. So we'll say mail. Action is send mail there we go so now what we can do is we can configure this let's move this up a little bit so we can see what we're going to do so we're going to use the standard sort of wordpress emails but obviously you set up an smtp server kind of thing you know you could use lots of different tools to do this and now again we just need to map the data so from email choose the user's email from name choose their first name and their second name two this is where we're going to put in our email if you want to add a CC or a BCC in, you can do a reply to. We'll drop in their email one more time. Subject, code new booking, for example. The body. So now we can build up the body of the email. Now you can use HTML fields here if you want to, and you can map them and do all those kinds of things. So what we need to do is simply grab the data from here. So you could say department, for example, and we'll say their department. And you could just then say, what comment do they have? And we'll click and add their comment in and we'll say booking time grab their data you see how this works so you can build this data up inside you if you want to add attachments in you can do if you've had that option and is this email in html format we'll say yes it is so what you can do is you can run a test run on this providing your email is all set up that will send the email and everything will work exactly as it should do so there's the first action. Let's now go and add another action in. So we'll click the plus. Our second action in this example may be something like connecting this up to Google Sheets. In our Google Sheets, you can choose from add row or append or update row. In this example, we say add row. You choose your connection and you then go through and connect everything up. This example, let's add one more in 
and we're going to add in our Slack application. So we choose Slack from the list. And you've got some options here as well. So create a channel, send a message to a channel, send a direct message, and so on. We're going to say we want to send a message to a channel. Now, I've set up Slack already to be able to connect up to this. If you'd like to see a video on how to do something like that to connect Slack over to BitFlows, let me know in the comment section down below, and I will absolutely show you how to do that. But I don't want to get into that kind of thing because you may not be using Slack. You could be using a million other different things. I want to demonstrate how we can handle more complex sort of processes like this. So now we've got that. I've already got a connection set up. There's my Slack connection. So now we can choose the various different options. So again, you'll see we're mapping data to the relevant section. So select our channel. I've set up the bot to be able to work inside the all WP Tuts. The message, this is where we grab the info again from our map data. So we'll come into our message. Could be here, for example. Send as a bot if you want to. Your bot name. Up to you. you can customize this as you want. Attach image by URL or to expand links. I kind of like this option because if you choose this, if a link is included in the message, like a video link or something, it'll automatically show you that inside the Slack comment, which is cool. Uh, and you can link usernames and all those kinds of things. So you can set this up as you see fit. We can hit a test run again. Test is successful. So now if we jump over into Slack, we can see inside my all WP touch channel, my BitFlows connection, which is the name of my bot, has left a comment. And obviously, whatever you kind of build out inside BitFlows itself for the content you want to pass over, we've passed over here as well. So let's go back. Let's change the message a little bit. Let's get rid of this to start off with. And let's just put in so now we've created a more comprehensive message by mapping different data. So again, let's test run this. Test is successful. And as you can see, if we come over now, it says, Paul C messaged a comment. So we're creating more useful information being passed over into something like Slack. So now by using this kind of process, you can see we've got the trigger submitting that form with data, a new WordPress user being created, and then three different actions being taken simultaneously after that, an email being sent out, Google Sheets being updated, and also a Slack message being sent over. But you could go way, way, way further with this. There's so many different things you could do here. You could keep it super simple, like you could have a support request form that automatically sends a message to Slack, and then you can handle it from there but you could go way, way beyond that. And once you start to realize what you can do with tools like BitFlows, you realize that you can streamline and automate a lot of your boring and laborious workflows, all done automatically behind the scenes for you. So hopefully you found that useful and it's shown you some of the things you could do with BitFlows and how you could easily be able to create quite complex, different sort of processes all being handled by a single trigger. This is really just scratching the surface of what could be done. And if you'd like to know more, make sure you go down there and you hit that thumbs up button and hit subscribe to be notified when new content like this is added. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.